Are you interested in slip casting? Do you want to see somebody go through their whole process beginning to end? That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how I slip cast. It's Andy Graves. You can find me at andygravesstructures.net. I have a link below. And I'm an outsider artist in NYC, and I am super happy you're here watching this video today. So the setup I'm using today uh, Wait, to do. Are you really happy I'm here? And I'm super happy you're here today. I'm super happy you're here watching this video today. I'm very happy you're watching this video today. Slip casting. I'm going to use this plaster mold, which is a mold I made a few years ago, a mold of this shell. And during the video, I'll show you the inside of it and, and what it looks like, kind of explain how it functions. And then what I've done is prepared uh, some slip. This is casting slip. This is liquefied clay, essentially. That's, that's clay in there. You can see it. I'm going to pour that into the mold, let it set up, and then take out a replica of the shell, which is this piece. This is the original here, and this is the replica that I cast yesterday in porcelain. So I'm going to show you how I do that today. The, the mold we're using today is of a shell that I made several years ago. I put the shell inside of this, and I'm going to take it apart to show you how the whole package kind of fits together. So slip casting uses plaster molds to create replicas. This is a four-part mold. The number of parts a mold has depends largely on how complex the original model was that the mold was made from. So there's the shell sitting inside. Plaster mold making is a topic needing its own video series. I treat the molds I make as if they were sculptures themselves. This one is a reflection of the beautiful shell that it was made from. Okay, and to put it back together, I'll do it with the shell inside so you can see how that goes. If a mold is made with care, it will cast nearly perfect replicas. As you will see later, this one makes almost flawless porcelain copies of the original shell. A mold's lifespan can be upwards of 50 casts. As they, as they age, the surface starts losing fidelity. Small pinholes develop on their surface and of course chips at their seams. Just like that. All right, we're gonna slip cast this. I've opened it back up and taken the shell out. And first I've gotta put the mold together and then I've gotta use the banding strap. This is a, a strap that kind of clamps the whole mold together so the pieces don't fall apart when we put the slip inside. Another popular method to hold molds together is with large, heavy-duty rubber bands. They work well on uh, smaller kinds of molds. I love seeing a mold go together. I get to see the negative shape of the original model. In my own artist's creative mind, I enjoy exploring the negative shapes of objects. Now I'm going to put the banding strap on. The mold needs to be held together. Besides keeping it held tightly together while it's casting, it's also necessary when the liquefied clay is poured out. Just slips around like that. It's got this funny... What's so funny about that? Clamping mechanism. I've never really seen kind of straps like this used for anything else. Okay, the whole piece together. I like to use a banding wheel so I can, you know, spin, spin it around as I'm working on it quite easily. I've prepared the slip. The slip or liquefied clay is basically regular clay. It has a chemical that causes the particles of clay to stay suspended in the water. With the clay evenly suspended in the mixture, we will get even walls in our cast. When I'm filling this mold, there's the shell has a curved top to it, and there's like an air pocket inside. I've got to roll the mold to, to let the air come out. Okay, 
I can I can actually see the air bubbles I kind of release when I do this. Got it. And then we just fill her on up to the top. Okay. So I put the slip in. The water in the slip is going to be absorbed by the plaster by capillary action. So the water is finding its way into the pores that are inside of the slip or inside of the plaster. And as that happens, first of all, the level of the slip that I have in here is going to go down. Some molds would require you to be topping them off. This one has, a, you know, the shell ends kind of far down and... I'm not sure I understand. I've got a long neck on it that I fill up and it's enough room that the, the slip is not going to uh, go down, you know, too far. And I, I don't need to top it off anyways. The graphic I made on the right shows where the negative of the shell is in the plaster mold. The liquefied clay's water that I've poured in the mold is being absorbed by the plaster mold. Over the course of 30 minutes as the water is absorbed, a clay skin will build up on the surface of the inside of the mold. After 30 minutes, the accumulated skin is going to be one quarter of an inch thick. That clay skin is what slip casting is all about. I don't know of any other kind of mold system that creates forms this way. And we're going to leave this for a half hour. And after a half hour, I'm going to take and pour this slip out. The liquid center that's not gelled or not part of the skin, there's still going to be just liquid clay inside. I'll dump that out and let it rest for a while and then we're going to be able to open it up and take a look at the shell inside. You can see my 10 gallon bucket. I mix my slip casting clay in. I mixed it using a recipe just like baking. Different dry ingredients scooped in from big 50 pound bags. Mix it with water and the chemical that suspends the clay particles in the water. I use a big drill to uh, mix. Way too much information. Okay, so the shell was left to drain for about, I don't know, five minutes. And now I need to leave, leave this thing sit for about 30 minutes to dry out completely. Uh, not completely, but I'll, I have to trim a little bit on the inside, which I'll show you. And then we're going to let it dry enough that the water from the clay shell that's in there now absorbs into the plaster and the, the shell piece itself will shrink and it actually pulls away from the plaster a little bit. When it pulls away, then it's ready to be released uh, from the mold completely. I can take the mold apart. It usually takes about 20 or 30 minutes for that to happen. All right, so I've got to cut the, the inside of this clay out of here in the neck. There's a lot of extra clay that's part of the mold that's not part of the shell. Casting slip dries rapidly. It also tends to be brittle rather quickly. It does not work like cream or throwing clays, which tend to stay soft and pliable. So now I can watch inside the clay and in about 20 minutes I'm going to see it pulling away from the plaster. Uh, very small space. Once it's pulled away I'll take a photograph of it and put that in the video so you can see you know what I'm talking about. All right, so it's sat for a while. I took a photograph. It's it's subtle, I'm trying to show how the the clay shrinks away from the plaster. And now I can open open the mold up. Uh, we take off the banding strap. To be a little bit careful. Sometimes uh, it might not be all the way dry. Don't want to tear tear the piece, but this one's fine. So it opens up. So now, this this section is all extra. This is just part of the mold. In order to make the mold, I needed 
I needed a section to come up higher than the top of the shell. So I had to create this kind of neck inside the mold. And when I cast it, then I, I have to cut all this off. So I'm going to uh, do that now. We'll, we'll time lapse through that. The clay I'm cutting off gets recycled. I keep the scraps and when I mix the next batch, I will mix it back in. Okay, so it's it's cleaned up. It's cleaned up enough. I have a little surprise. A surprise for me. Keeping, I, I normally would clean this up a little bit more, but I'm not gonna waste the time on it because I wanna show you something when we're done here. So the piece just comes out of the mold pretty easily. So my mold is several years old and there are little chips that I've had that cause these uh, flashing parts to happen. So the, the slip goes in and finds its way into where something had like chipped off. So these big ones on this piece I like to take off. However, in my work generally, the seams, like there's a seam here. I like to leave those. That's cool. It kind cool. of shows the handmade quality of the piece. I, I'm not trying to, to fake anybody out by making shells that, you know, look like shells 100%. I like to do that. And, and also, I want to show you, so it comes out, and in the bottom, if you can see, Gross. there is some, like a pool of slip that didn't get drained out properly. So that's also because when, the, when I'm draining it upside down, the slip will collect you know, not sure I understand. This would be the bottom. The slip collects in there, and I've got to like kind of roll it around and get that slip out. Again, I can clean that out now, but I'm not going to take the time because I want to do something else here quickly. This is the original, and this is the slip cast piece that I just did. Complete perfect replica, uh, except for the pore lines and the fact that I haven't really cleaned this one up fully. Uh, what I wanted to show you was what slip casting does in terms of building up that shell. So I'm going to cut this in half so you can see a cross section of what uh, this looks like on the inside. I know, it's almost sacrilegious, isn't it? Sacrilegious? Oh. Here you can see the thickness that was built up, the shell of clay that was kind of left behind as the water uh, absorbed into the plaster. And it's pretty remarkable.